Um, in this tutorial, we're going to explain how to create a reproduction game from an NROM game from a Nintendo Entertainment System, but this time utilizing the second dimension NROM board. In this case, it's called the NROM DXS NROM 256-01 from second dimension, as stated previously. It consists of two chips. It's going to be our PRG chip right here on the right side, 28-pin EEPROM chip and a CHR chip, as you can see up there, which is also 28 pin. Both of them are 28 pins. Now, in this board, the C you'll notice that the CIC security chip is already installed. Uh, originally, they're not installed, but the owner was um, and was nice enough to install them for me, and they're, they're good to go. You don't have to prepare them or anything. Just put on the two, just put the two chips, Place it on a front loader Nintendo and you're good to go. It right away works. The game we're going to be doing this time around with this chip is going to be Antarctic Adventure, which consists of two types of chips a 27C 128 chip, which is 16 kilobytes of data. I'm if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be the PRG chip. Now, on the left side, Unfortunately, the CHR chip is an 8 kilobyte data chip, so we have to do something with the program which will be explained later in order to make it compatible with this board, but we'll see that very, very soon. Anyway, this is the board itself, nice blue color, nice contacts at the bottom. Notice up here, the two little um, soldering points. You can barely make it out, but one of them says V on the left side, on the right side it says H. This is very important because if you choose the wrong option um, it will not work all, or it will have problems working. This is called the mirroring option. Uh, the program we're going to be using on the second part of the video will explain what to do in this case. And this is the back of the board. Very nice looking board by itself. Notice the contacts. Um, the only thing I find a little bit disappointing, but not that much, is the fact that the contacts, very little contact copper compared to other boards on the market, like on my previous video, which has a more, a better surface area, but it works perfectly and it's still an awesome, awesome board. Okay, the back, and this is the front. So, now that we've seen the board, where and we explain what type of chips we're going to be using, for the for the board now the next step is to download the ROM and prepare it with a program which is me on the next video just something very important about the components besides the obvious two EEPROM chips one for CHR and one for PRG and if you want to play this on a front loader Nintendo the CIC chip you also need to install a capacitor on the right side of the board which is around here okay the capacitor you're going to be using is a 0 0.1, 0.1 microfarad 50 volt ceramic capacitor. You can use any type of value if you wish, but it's very important that that's, that is a 0.1 or 0 0.1 microfarad 50 volt capacitor. These are really, really cheap, and I, I'm pretty sure you can purchase these online. I'm not too sure if you can purchase them directly to Second Dimension, but you can, however, purchase them cheaply on eBay or any other electronic source. But this is very important in order to finish the, the board, otherwise you're going to have problems later on. These are the chips that are going to be used on the board itself. Your, there are three types I'm listing here. The 27C128, which is the one, these two right here. The 27C256, which are these two here. And the 27C512, which are these at the bottom. All of them are 28 dip pins, meaning there are 14 pins on the left and on the right. Also keep a note of this little notch. That's the orientation of how the, uh, the chip goes when you're recording and when you're putting it into the board itself. For the most part, though, you're going to be focusing and using these on top because NROM games either be NROM 128 or NROM 256 don't use um, 64 kilobyte at least from what I've seen 
And there might be one weird one around there, but for the most part, these are the ones you're gonna use. The 128 is 16 kilobytes, and the 256 are 32 kilobytes. Um, basically, it depends on the game. You could use either one for CHR or PRG, but these are the ones you're gonna be using the most. Next step, step is now to prepare the game or the NES ROM file we downloaded in order to split the file into two formats, a CHR and a PRG format. Uh, recall that it's an NES file extension and therefore it's needed to be split in half. One for CRG, CHR and one for PRG and each one of those files is going to be installed in its own corresponding EEPROM chip. Now, first thing is to download the game, obviously. Second is to then split the files using a program. Um, to be perfectly honest, there are several programs you can use. However, my favorite is Famirom, as stated in the other videos I've, I've uploaded. And the benefit with Famirom is that you can also apply translation patches and other hacks, pack, hack type pack uh, patches. In this case, since we're going to be making a repro of Antarctic Adventure and there's some parts of it that are, that are in Japanese I have with me the the patch in order to make it first into English then we will go and split the file the NES file it creates in two. First things first let's open Famirom which is right here over this now and now we drag the game which is, is this one this is Antarctic Adventure Japanese game into the program. Notice that it's the same information we saw in the other video. However, this one says, um, as for this game, Antarctic Adventure, it's the, it's horizontal mirroring. We need that information in order to choose the corresponding um, option on the board. It's a 16 kilobyte PRG uh, file format, which is going to be using the 27C128 um, EEPROM chip. Since the CHR is only 8 kilobytes and the board does not support that type of EEPROM chip, we need to use one, convert it into a, a chip that is compatible with the board. So in this case, it's going to be the 27128 again. But before we do that, let's go back and let's apply the, the English patch. First, we click on Load IPS, which is the, the way to patch the game. And this is the patch for the game itself. So we double click, notice the new file format, and here's the ROM. Notice how it says the Japanese original name plus Antarctic Adventure U.NES. What we do to make sure, we just drag it back into the program. We have the same information as before, the same horizontal, same PRG size, same CHR. And what we're going to do now is first is to split the game into CHR and PRG. So we click here. Click on 27128, which is again the compatible chip for the board, and just click split. We're going to have these two file formats. I'm going to put them around here. So you can see what in, see them. First, we have here is a PRG for the English translation of Antarctic Adventure, and here we have the CHR of Ant Antarctic Adventure. Um, notice this as times two because it's eight times. It's basically twice the file size of the original and that's not going to damage the game or it won't ruin the game in any shape or form it's just duplicating the information on the ROM chip so anyway once we have these two the two files we need to burn remember one these is for one chip and the other is for the other chip and then to install on the board itself and now for the soldering process the board we have the CHR on the left which is the one with the duplicate data. We have the PRG on the right, which is the, tw uh, the single, the normal data. Both of them are 27C128 EEPROM chips. You'll notice right here on the right, the capacitor used. Again, the 0.1 microfarad 50 volts, very important. The CHE, CA chip, CIC chip, which was uh, previously installed by the, the owner of the company. And my fantastic once more, soldering job which is uh, uh, I've done better and uh, never mind it, it should work anyway but anyway it's a nice complete board Antarctic translated 
the <laughs> Antarctic adventure translated into English should be done. Also very important how we chose here the option of V vertical. Very important we chose that one to make this work according to the to the Famiron program. But yeah, now it's just to test these out and make sure it works. And folks, it, the game works perfectly on the Retron HD. Um, as you can see, it's running no problems whatsoever. Sound is perfect. Screen is perfect. Everything to, seems to be working perfectly, honestly. Yeah, I've been repeating perfectly way too much. But in any case, let's start a quick game so you can see the game in action. go. Sound for is in English and we all saw that and now to see you can see the game play. Very responsive, but yes, I am not too good that good into the game. But I like it any which way. Okay. But yeah, everything seems to be working fine as you guess. I just So this is a working copy of Antarctica Rigid translated into English. The original Japanese has some Japanese text, obviously. But yeah, here you go. And that's pretty much it, folks. This is a working copy of the re a working repro of the original game translated. And yeah, I will call this a success. Let's finish up to the end of the level to help the little penguin guy out, which I call him Tux, even though I know he's not Tux. Like a fishies and I'm gonna start helicopter mode. Whee! That's me, that's me actually running around. Ah, oh, definitely that's me. Okay. Perfect. The ROM and the repro is a success. And why does it keep moving? I have no idea. There we go.